Join us as career changers, company leaders, industry experts, and others who have been in your shoes share their stories, insights, and lessons learned to help you find enjoyment through employment in the tech world. I'm Nemo Ashong, and this is the Enjoyment Podcast. Let's start today off with a question. How do you transition into tech when you've had a long gap in U.S. employment or have just been out of the country for a long while? The answer, you use what you did during that time to your advantage by incorporating it into your story and your differentiated value proposition. And that's exactly what our featured employee, Adele Sanchez, did and will share with each of us in today's conversation. Adele shares how she went from being an airline gate attendant to entering the tech world during the dot-com craze to taking seven years off to go and travel the world and then coming back and rising throughout tech to find success as a leader in her organizations. I'm excited because Adele gives a little bit of insight and, and a little bit of a roadmap for those of you who might have gaps in your employment and ways to kind of look at that situation, not as a negative, but as a potential advantage if positioned in the right way. So I'm excited for you to go ahead and listen to this episode. And if you're liking what you're hearing and you know someone else whose story could go ahead and empower other people, we'd love to share them on this podcast. Just send a message over to Nemo at employment.com and let me know who might be available. In fact, you can also go over to our Facebook page on facebook.com slash employment or just as simply by just going to employment.com slash Facebook and send us a message there. We'd love to hear from you. We are really interested in providing value to as many people as we can. And we do that by all working together. Thank you in advance for just even considering this here. And let me get out of your way so you can benefit from this episode with Adele Sanchez. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to the Enjoyment Podcast, where we are focused on helping people just like you find enjoyment through employment. Today, I have the pleasure of having a conversation with Adele Sanchez. Adele, thank you so much for making the time to be here with us today. Oh, thank you so much. It's totally my pleasure. This is going to be um, going to be a great conversation, and I'm really excited to explore how you have found uh, enjoyment through employment. Uh, but before we do that, I think it'd be really great just to get to understand you a little bit better and what you do personally, some of the things you do for fun, and, and what you consider to be important to you. So, would you mind just sharing with us a little bit about your life, love, work, and passion? Sure. Yeah. Um, I guess you could say that I have always had a travel bug. I, one of my first jobs that I had right out of high school was working for an airline. So immediately I had exposure and access to the ability and the fortune of traveling. And so from a very young age, I just wanted to go and explore the world. And that's really, you know, that really encompasses a lot of my, you know, looking back in my 40 something years of life that really has taken up a lot of my life. Um, and when you say love, life, work, um, and what was the other one? And passion. And passion. I think it, it, I think it encompasses all of that when I travel. Um, I've, I've traveled for love and with loves. I've, I've, um, it's, it's definitely a passion of mine. I have, uh, done work as I was traveling and found work when I was traveling. So it, it really, travel is, it just combines all of those things for me. Well, that's really exciting. And, you know, I recently moved to Singapore, so I'm experiencing my first bit of travel uh, from that regard. Can I just ask you as one person who's had experience with travel to someone who's uh, getting it, getting their feet wet with this. Do you have any suggestions about incorporating travel into your life and making the most from it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think um, first and foremost, just being open to the possibilities. I think when, I think oftentimes people go and travel and, you know, they're, they're only there for one week or two weeks and that's great. You know, um, you, you take your vacation and you got to head back home and do your, your everyday life. But if you have the 
opportunity and the willingness and the openness to go travel and just see what happens, you'd be amazed at the opportunities that come your way. And it could be anything from, you know, teaching English in a school that you started volunteering at, which by the way, happened to me, or, you know, suddenly meeting up with some people who need an extra deckhand on a cruise ship or, um, you know, working uh, in a uh, organic farm and doing some woofing for a little bit or working in a hostel and getting paid by having a free room in the hostel and uh, inviting and meeting and welcoming um, visitors to, to that town or to that city. So there's, there are a lot of different ways that you can open yourself up, but I think mainly what's been a um, sort of guiding light for me has been if I kept myself open to the possibilities and I didn't have any other obligations, you know, anywhere else, but I was open to these possibilities, then a lot of opportunities come your way as long as you're open to it. Wow. That's, that's really great. And it's, I I like to ask you here, Adele, like we usually like to start off here with some kind of success quote or a mantra is open, uh, being open to possibilities, something that like has got guided your life or do you have something else that you use as kind of like your, your beacon forward as you move forward? I think being open to possibilities has uh, guided me as, you know, I was, I was uh, definitely as I was traveling and sort of finding my way. Um, But the 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 one mantra I think that's always stuck with me since I was very young and especially through trying and challenging times has been to be true to myself. So mm-hmm. as long as you're true to yourself and you listen to that truth, then I think you can get through the hardest times. And I think those, you know, when I think about life mantras, I think about what I say to myself during those trying times. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, be true to yourself. I think that's going to be absolutely um, something that's going to be important for anyone that, that's listening to this here. And, um, you know, just to kind of help uh, help us as, as we start on, on here, would you mind sharing a time where you felt like you needed to be true to yourself along your uh, your career and enjoyment journey? Yeah, I think, I mean, there there have been, I've been fortunate enough to have, I, I like to call it many lives um, where I've done a lot of different things in my life in terms of career and and growth and learning. I think but the one constant has always been learning. Um, but I think um, we, as you as you progress in your career and you start to take on more and more responsibility, one of the there's going to be a time where you're going to be faced with an opportunity that may not exactly be the right fit for you, may not necessarily feel 100% um, the right move, but you do it anyway for any other reason. For example, maybe you do it because uh, it's a lot of money, or maybe you do it because you have pressure from someone else, or maybe you do it because you think that's where you're supposed to go. But you know in your heart something didn't seem quite right, but you ignored that. And you go with it. And later on, you realize that probably wasn't the right move. Actually, you really realize that I should have listened to myself in the very beginning. Something didn't feel right because in the end, that ended up not being a good fit for you. And in fact, probably harmed you more than it helped you in your career. Wow, Adele. I I appreciate you just being so open about that. And I think, you know, as as you were saying this, I I was taking some notes and, you know, something I I eventually had to just like look up and just just kind of take all this in because I feel um, I feel that what you're saying there is just so universal. I can think about even my transition into uh, technology and really one of the things that was able to help me move forward was really thinking to myself, you know, like this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to do, regardless of the other emotions and feelings that that seem to be at least up until that point driving a lot of the decisions that I was making. Exactly, exactly. I think if you and you know, I think that 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 um, that belief in yourself and that trusting of yourself. And, and in, you know, in a, in a, even a broader scale, loving yourself enough 
is not something that comes easy for a lot of humans, for a lot of us. You know, I, I, it took me many, many years to get to a point where I can start to trust my own instincts and, and, and listen to my own instincts. And, um, you know, it's not, it's definitely not easy, especially when you're, you, you have pressure coming from all sorts of directions um, and the societal norms and what you should be doing versus what you know in your heart doesn't seem right to you. It, it's not a, it's not an easy journey, but I think as you go along, you'll realize that you, what, that what your heart and your soul is telling you is oftentimes very true. And it's just, you know, it's trials and tribulations, but you'll learn that that really is, should be, should be what you should, you you are listening to, because in the end, it it always proves to be the right way. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm loving how this is going. This is like, uh, thank you just really for, I I really feel like you're being authentic here. And that's exactly (laughs) what we need here for, for this conversation. And you had mentioned something that that came to that really struck me which is the met you live many lives so would you mind walking us through the many lives of adele and uh, giving us a, a picture of your uh your journey through your career yes so uh, as i said from um the beginning as soon as i graduated high school i started working so i was working through college and I got a job. I was lucky enough to get a job um, that allowed me some flexibility and was working for the airline. So I, I did the reservations for the, for the airline and I did that at the same time that I was going to school. Um, so I learned at a really young age that, you know, you, you got to struggle, you got to work, you know, you got, you, you, it's not just taking it easy and going to school. I mean, we all thought, School was hard, but wait till you get out in the real world. It's, it's a lot harder. Um, but so I started off with um, the airlines, and then I moved, uh, moved over to San Francisco from Texas. And in San Francisco, I still worked with the airline, but that was during the dot-com boom. So the original dot-com boom in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and my roommate at the time happened to be uh, working in HR for a tech company, a, star, a, a dot com company. Back then, we would call them dot coms. Um, and she's like, "Hey, you know, I need somebody to do support tickets, and it's just copy and paste by email." And I'm like, "Oh, that sounds interesting." She's like, "We'll pay you this much. You know, super easy. You could do it. Do it in your in your off time. I just need somebody to do this for some extra hours." So, although I was still working at the airline. I would do that on the side and eventually got to a point where I was doing the side job more and enjoying it more than the airline job. And so then they offered me a full-time job so I could, I could transition over. And so that's when I did the switch from uh, the airlines to the tech industry. And the, the beauty of getting your foot in the door with one of these companies is that you really get it, um, an opportunity to grow. And a lot of startups do this. It's not really something that's going to happen with an established company like a Salesforce or a Google or a Facebook or a, even a, a you know, Oracle, IBM, even older than that, right? It's usually going to be with these early stage startups or growth stage startups. So they've been around for under three years, let's say. In these types of startup environments, you really get a sense of um, of growth. Um, and so, what's happening is, as the company's growing, as an employee, you grow too. So, what 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 happens with you is, if you can get in, then you know you could start as a support agent, but you could end up like me. And by then, I was a you know working in the consulting part of the business um, in the professional services team as a project manager. And so that all happened within the course of four years. And that's a really common, a common um, sort of path is you get your foot in the door. You may not have the technical skill and that's okay. You don't need to have the technical ability to work in IT. I think, I think that's a misconception. I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, I can't really make that switch. How is it that you went from working as a gate agent at the airport to working as a project manager um, in the professional services department of this uh, tech company? And 
actually, I was lucky that I had a roommate who, who uh, was able to introduce me. And so it could just be as easy as an introduction and um, also the opportunity to fill a gap that they needed, which was they just needed somebody to answer support tickets. But then you work your way up. And that's, again, that's the beauty of these uh, startups is it really, as the company grows, you can grow with the company. You have a much better chance of growing and learning new skills and developing your skills and getting exposed to all these different areas. And, and, you know, maybe you start off doing support tickets and then you start off doing account management and then you start off, um, you know, maybe you switch over to sales and then, you know, it can, it can sort of just move like that because at this point you're a much better candidate than somebody on the outside. You're already on the inside. You know the product much better than somebody who's on the outside. So that's that's how my lives have have um, developed. Was I got a chance to get in, you know, through a friend, get in, and also by an opportunity that I just I just saw, and I thought, yeah, why not? Let me let me let me try it out, and it and it became it became my path. And once I was in, I was able to expose myself and open myself up to all these opportunities from within the organization. And, you know, that's, that's really what it's about. It's, it's that movement, it's that exposure, it's that learning and growing um, once you're in and, and knowing that you don't have to have, to have gone to school for computer science or be a software engineer to work in tech. There are a lot of other opportunities in the tech world where you don't really need to know how to do code. So it's, it's a, it's a, it was, it's continues to be a great experience for me. And it, and that sort of path, I have been happy enough and blessed enough to provide that path to others. I, today I am a VP of um, the customer success team for an early stage startup and I have been with uh, startups um, in the last eight years. And my one of the, the things that I love to do is hire uh, new um, employees, new staff members to come in. And, you know, even as their first job out of college, they might come in as a support agent or a training specialist or someone on, on sort of the customer success, customer service side because it's a nice entry level position and then they've worked their way up and I have been so blessed to be able to mentor and 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 support that kind of growth. Wow, thank you so much Adele. I am like it's it's really clear how much joy like you get from uh, from this, <laughs> this path of success here. And um, even just in the way that you're helping to explain uh, your, your path and, you know, how things uh, came about, it's clear, like having you as a mentor must, must be something really special. So um, <laughs> thank you so much for, for, for sharing that. Absolutely. Um, and if, if I was going to ask you here, I guess, I guess what I, what I like to do is like, so you, you've gone through this journey, you started out um, in, uh, in the airline industry, you know, got an opportunity for, and I, I like this, like the dot-com company, the precursors to, to the tech, even though they're all <laughs> one the same, right? Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, that journey has now put you in a, in a position where you're, you're the VP of different areas, you're leading teams, you're hiring people, and you're mentoring people. Uh, and I think it's one of those things where in hearing it, it kind of, can sound like a very linear path from, you know, the start and then, you know, just stay with it. And next, you know, you'll have success. But what I've found is that there are some like twists, turns or some things that you don't there expect. Are to come in there. <laughs> there are definitely some twists and turns. And actually I, I left a big gap in that for seven mm. years. Yeah. So what, what had happened was, you know, as, is, as some of you may or may not know, the dot coms did have a a that bubble burst um, in in the early two thousands, and so there was definitely um, a time where the 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 growth kind of just stopped and the investment stopped um, with startups and the tech industry just kind of uh, halted for a period of time, especially with startups. Um, you know, we went into recession. That was also during the time of the housing crisis. It was just a, 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 
a, a, a challenging time in the, in the industry. And so at this time, I decided to make a change. And I decided that I would take the, the leave, um, the, the severance, and get laid off. And I bought a one-way ticket and moved to Bangkok and decided to be, that I wanted to be an English teacher. It's something I always wanted to do. I always, again, the travel thing came into play. I, I thought, okay, um, I want to travel a bit and I want to work and I want to help people while I do it. So I took a, a TEFL course in Bangkok and I got a job pretty quickly teaching English. And for the next seven years, I lived abroad in different countries and taught English and the English teaching um, of children. I, I taught children from the age of three all the way up. And then um, that eventually evolved into teaching adults business English. And then that evolved eventually into teaching at uh, Berlitz in Shanghai. Um, and I was doing business English and also culture classes. So that was during the um, 2005, uh, leading up to the uh, Olympics. And so there was a lot of foreign investment, a lot of expats, a lot of um, Chinese, um, a lot of uh, Chinese businessmen and women working uh, for multinational companies and needing to learn a lot more about Western culture and Western business practices. And so I developed a program with the Ber under working under Berlitz to help them not only with their business English, but also in Western business practice. Oh, wow. That's yeah, that's I'm glad that we, we filled in that gap a little bit here. Um, and I'll be kind of curious. So you had this this gap here now, now that now kind of plugging that into the story a bit. How have you found yourself using like all these varied experiences that you've had? Cause it seems that, you know, it's mm -hmm. been quite, quite a journey all over. Um, how have you yeah. been able to like tie all that and leverage that to bring you success right now in your career? That's a great question. So I have to tell you this story because I really do believe it's because of my experience abroad that um, I even got a job when I came back. So what I decided to come back to the States in 2010, which if, if you remember correctly, we were still in a recession. Uh, there was a lot going on at that time. There wasn't a whole lot of hiring. Um, in fact, our, un our unemployment rate was very high at that time. But my mother was sick and I decided to come back uh, to live in the US. And when I came back, I came back to San Francisco because that's where I had left and I still had a network there. And, you know, you always got to use your network. I can't emphasize that enough, but always use your network. And if your network is going to be in a certain city, in a certain place, and that's kind of where you want to start, especially if the network you're looking for is in tech or, or any other industry, that's, that's, you know, definitely something, a resource that you should, should not overlook. And so for me, I thought, okay, my network is, most of my network, at least my professional network is in San Francisco. So I'm going to go there. And when I came back, um, I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to start applying for jobs. You know, at this point I was living abroad, you know, I didn't think that anybody was going to hire me, but I thought, you know, shoot, I'm just going to apply. Let's see what happens. And strangely enough, um, I got a lot of callbacks and the reason why I got a lot of callbacks is because everybody was curious about my time living abroad. And one of the things that I did do while I was living in Shanghai was I got my, I got an MBA with Rutgers University. I just, it was an executive MBA program. I applied for it. I could work while I'm taking it. And it's, I thought, you know, I kind of had some you know, this is where I kind of had some forethought in terms of like, if I ever go back to America, maybe I, you know, I should, sh I should have something, maybe something like this might be helpful. And so I did get my MBA in Shanghai with Rutgers University. And so that was also on my resume. And so those two things, getting a, a, an MBA in China and working abroad, those two things made my resume stand out above Stanford MBA graduates. And I got callbacks and wow. I got job within six months. Wow. And it, it's so interesting hearing this here because, you know, like you, you came in and you said, I'll do it, but I, I don't see this actually working out. And 
it's specifically because of that uniqueness, specifically because you you were true to yourself and you you know went out to uh, to, to Bangkok and you had these experiences here that actually it seemed catapulted you in terms of uh, you know being amongst other people. Am I getting that right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. I was true to myself and I believed in myself and I knew, you know, I knew I I continued to do what I thought I needed to do and what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to teach English, I wanted to travel, I wanted to live in all these different countries. I wanted to help people. And so I was doing what I felt true true to me, but then when I needed to go home, I went home. And I thought, okay, now I'm going to find another job. It might be hard. I, I really did think it was going to be hard because at this point, I've been away for seven years. Meanwhile, all of my friends have progressed. You know, they're already directors or VPs at their companies. They never left, whereas I did. And I come back and I'm thinking, there's no chance. There's no way anyone's going to hire me. What am I going to do? You know, I've. they're just going to think, what have you been doing for seven years? But actually exactly what I was doing for seven years was the reason why I got callbacks. There's the, what I had been doing for seven years was, a, was exactly the reason why people called me and wanted to talk to me. They were curious about my experience because I did what I wanted to do and I was helping people and I was learning and growing and experiencing. And that, that ended up being the most valuable thing for me in the long run. And all of that cultural, you know, just coming back to what you had asked me originally, all of that experience um, in teaching and in cultural diversity and, um, and um, understanding, uh, you know, different people and how they learn, all of that has helped me tremendously in my career now because, you know, with most jobs that you're going to work at, most companies you're going to work at, they are going to be global companies, I would hope. And when those companies go global, they really need to have a good understanding of um, dealing with people of different culture, different of, of people who don't, you know, where English is not their uh, primary language. Um, people who uh, learn in different ways and listen in different ways and behave in different ways from the Western mentality and particularly the American mentality. So, you know, having that experience was super helpful for me because I, you know, the, the, the department I work in and have worked in since I've come back to the States has always been on the post-sales side, customer success, account management, customer experience, however, whatever you want to call it, training, support. I've done it all um, in, within that department. And, and all of that is related to working with customers from all over the world and helping them be successful. And if I can't even understand how they feel or understand what they're saying or understand where they're coming from, it's oftentimes can be very difficult to, to make them successful. So I think my experience abroad has helped me to be, to relate to them more. Absolutely. It, it's, it seems like you've just developed such a high level of empathy uh, through this through this experience and, and really bringing it all together. And, you know, my, my background uh, was also involved in uh, company culture uh, and working on global inclusion uh, and how, how do we across multiple offices all come together to uh, work in an integrated uh, and inclusive manner. And, you know, that really just seems that you know, it, it's really quite amazing to hear how all of your different experiences have brought themselves together to give you, this unique positioning out there, which I, I can easily see why people were, were at least curious to, <laughs> to talk to Adele and find out more um, <laughs> from there. Uh, so that, that's great, Adele. And like, so typically we'll, we'll go around and we'll talk about a roadblock on the journey. And right now uh, we kind of talked about it through the seven year gap. I do want to give you a chance here um, just in case anything else comes to mind about any other specific challenge or difficult time that you had at work on, during your journey and the steps that you took to overcome that. If you feel good about the gap, we can move on. But I would be curious um, just to make sure uh, that, that we've covered everything that you might want to say. Um, yeah. I, so more, re I mean, there's always going to be challenges along the way. Just, you know, I, I think 
I think the, the, the thing that I want to, to convey there is that as you grow and as you learn and as you go along your career, whatever career path you end up taking, and even if that path changes, you're going to have challenges. It's, it's, everything is not going to be um, rosy all the time, you know? And I think it's the challenges that make us stronger. It's the challenges that actually have, make you um, have to look and listen to that inner voice and you know it's that moment where you have to say to yourself okay is this is this that time when i have to be true to myself and um make those difficult decisions that on the outside may feel so hard to do but inside in your heart and in your soul you know it's the right thing for you to do and those challenges can come in so many forms those challenges can come in the form of um, you know, someone at work who's just trying to knock you down and doesn't believe in you. And there's no reason for it, but they just, they're, they're, they're a naysayer. They're, they're someone who just isn't going to ever be on your side and that's okay. You know, that, that, that's, that's their opinion, but not everyone's going to love you all the time. And that's just the way it is. You know, another, another, another way that you might feel a challenge is that, you might have to take on work that may not necessarily feel good for you, may not necessarily feel like the path that you need to go down or the kind of work that you want to do because it's, it's, it's hard or it's stressful or it's um, you know, not exactly what you're interested in, but it might be something that you need as a stepping stone to get somewhere else. So that's also challenging, you know, and it's also, it's also where you have to, you know, stop and think, okay, is my end goal to get to that next space at that next level? And if I do, then I've got to get through this level first, or is my end goal to just really enjoy what I'm doing? And it doesn't matter about progressing. I just, I just really want to enjoy what I'm doing. And this is not one of those things that I enjoy. You know that's a, a challenging time, and and probably a a, um, a a crossroads that a lot of us face. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's just you being true to yourself and figuring out, okay, what's the right thing for me, and what's my the best intention for me? Like, where am I trying to go? And I think as long as you ask yourself that, you know, what's how am I going to be true to myself and what are the intentions that I want and what are the goals that I want? What's the end goal that I want? Then that's going to help you, you know, with your journey a lot more. Great. Thank you so much for that. No, thanks for wrapping all that up for us here. And I think what'll be really fun is to like now flip things on its head. We've talked about some of the challenging stuff here. I would love to maybe walk through one experience that you had that was just like your proudest moment, something that you can look back on and say, wow, I'm really happy that that uh, that we did that. And I think with this year, if we can find like one specific project that you did and uh, the steps that you took to make that a success, that'll be really helpful. Um, so I know that you want me to say, talk about a project, but actually to me, you know, like we, we talked about earlier, what, what gives me the greatest joy and what I've realized all these years um, in my career that I'm best at is being a mentor. So for me, when I think about, when I look back and think about what I'm most proud of, it's actually the people that I have hired and mentored and seen them grow um, over the years. So there's one, one in particular that I, I like to call out just because uh, she comes to mind, but there's so many, there are so many, but, you know, sort of going back to what I had said before she was, she was actually a teacher and I was looking for someone to be a training specialist. It's an entry level position in the tech industry, um, on the customer success, uh, department actually under training and support, which is, uh, usually under the customer success umbrella. And, um, I poached her and I said, Hey, you know, since you're a teacher, because that's how I was, I was an English teacher and it was easy for me to transition into technical training. Um, I said, you know, I think you'd be really good. She was a friend of a friend. I said, just give it a try. She never even thought about going to the tech world, but she knew that she wasn't very happy where she was. Um, she 
didn't think she can get into the tech world because she, all she had was a teaching degree and all she knew was she was a teach she's been a teacher and she had been teaching for a number of years um but i told her actually i love that you don't have any technical background i love that you're a teacher i know i've been a teacher and i know that you can do technical training it's an easy um sort of evolution and it's super organic path uh, and it's a great way for you to get your foot into in the door in, in the tech space. And so she gave it a shot. She took took a risk on it. She believed in me and she she came in and it was amazing to see her grow. Over the last six years, I no longer work with her, but through the three years that I worked with her and then the two years after, uh, three years after, she has started off as a training and support specialist, answering support tickets and also doing training and helping with training. And she moved into, eventually made her way up and moved up into on the technical side. So after some technical, uh, you know, we gave her some courses that she could take and she, she, she took some courses on the side that the company paid for. She is now um, on the engineering team and she's an implementations engineering specialist and that is makes me so proud and that's to me the projects are the people that i mentor and if i could see them grow and get to a place that makes them so happy and really is you know showing that you don't need to be afraid you can take the chance and and if you believe in yourself and if you open your mind to the possibilities, so much can happen for you. Wow. I am sitting here. So <laughs> no, I'm getting goosebumps on this side <laughs> over here. And I think, you know, something that, that thank you for sharing that. And, um, you know, and, you know, I hope the, the person who uh, you mentored through this process here is also gets a chance to listen to this, uh, this episode, because, you know, there's just another level of uh, of benefit that that has come from the work that she's put in and that you put in, which is that now uh, employees get a chance to benefit from this story and continue to move forward. And you've given me something here, which is the the interesting. I won't even say interesting. The path to take coming from wherever you are to get in into a more technical role, even on an engineering team. Um, I just really found it quite interesting that it didn't have to go through a training boot camp or like, you know, she didn't have to like quit her job and then go off and try and learn how to code, but she was able to leverage her skills um, and get into technology overall and then see it firsthand and continue to explore and get supported by the organization and, uh, and so on and so forth. So that in just six short years, uh, she's in a, in a completely different place. Um, I think that that's something really powerful that that um, really strikes me as well. Yes, absolutely. And I've seen it time and time again. And I've been involved in that time and time again. And so I know that it is truth. And I know that it happens. And I know that there are organizations out there that are willing and and wanting to um, groom people. And as long, again, as long as they can see that you have the drive and the commitment and, and, and the ability, you know, the, the ability to be open to it and learn as much as you can and grow as much as you can. I, I, I know for a fact that there are a lot of organizations and a lot of managers out that want to support that. Wonderful. And Adele, like, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm going to change the switch things up a little bit here, but you've been mentioning that you've been a, a wonderful mentor and I'm just kind of hearing the, these stories and how important they are to you. Um, and we, I, I don't know if I had mentioned this before, but part of my role before coming uh, and starting employment was really around company culture and also just like uh, inclusion and such. And, you know, if you don't mind me asking this might, let me know if this is, this is too much for me to go out there, but I would love it to hear a little bit about like your experience as a, a, a woman in technology and if there's uh, any kind of advice, if you're going to mentor any person that's listening to this <laughs> year, uh, you know, perhaps, uh, perhaps from, from the standpoint of, of a woman in technology, would you have any insights or anything that you'd like to share or you could share? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, it's, it's been an amazing journey for me and, there are, I've been blessed enough to be around a, a lot of powerful and 
amazing, intelligent women um, who are so capable of so much and have either learned from me or I've learned from them. Um, and I've been lucky enough also to work in a department, typically um, customer success, customer support, training, that sort of thing. Typically, it lends itself to being a little bit more um, female heavy. When you look at the demographic of a company, a lot of them will uh, generally a lot, a lot more females in that arena, um, which has been, been a blessing for me. Um, but one of the things that you'll discover as you grow in your career and as you get older and you progress and you move higher in the ranks um, is that that ratio um, starts to shift a lot and there are fewer and fewer women um, as you go up the chain. And, you know, that's, that's not a surprise for all, all my life. I've heard that, that there's this glass ceiling and this boys club and all of that, you know, that you hear. And when you're younger, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to you. And, you know, to me, it never really made a whole lot of sense to me. I mean, I got it. Not, not that I didn't get it, but you don't experience it as much, you know, when you're young and you're carefree and you're just, you know, you, you, you go to this job for a couple of years and you get this job for a couple of years and you're kind of still making your way up and you have male bosses and female bosses and you work with a sort of a variety of, of, of um, people. It's not really something that's front and center. Um, but it is something that I've noticed as I've moved up in my career that um, it, it definitely becomes more front and center. It definitely becomes um, something that I'm super aware of. Not only am I a minority um, um, in, in my ethnicity, but I'm also a minority in, in terms of gender. Um, and I think the thing that I would, I would say there is to, that you're going to have sometimes deal with that gender inequality or that glass ceiling, you know, or that boys club mentality. And it does seem to be something that's, that's somewhat rampant in the tech world right now, particularly in Silicon Valley. Um, and it's, it's, it, it can be challenging. It can be challenging. But again, I think as long as you stay true to yourself and believe, believe in yourself, believe in your ability, believe in your skill, do not let anyone, anyone ever make you feel that you're less than or you're not worthy to stand, sit at that table or to stand amongst everyone else. You know, just know that you got there for a reason. And you are capable and empowered and, and strong, a strong woman to be amongst everyone else. And you, you deserve to be there. And, you know, just, just, just want to say, continue to believe in yourself and know that, that, that is where you should be standing. Adele, I sincerely appreciate uh, that sentiment there. Uh, I think, you you are worthy. You deserve to have a seat at that table. And, you know, as, as you're talking, I thank you for just being open to going in this direction here. Um, I just think it's really important to, to, to put all things out on the table here around like what, uh, what the experience can be like. Um, and also just to help us all create the type of experience that we're all looking for or that, that we may be looking for together. So um, I appreciate you, you, bringing that out there. If there was one, one other thing you would put out there, if you were one thing that, you know, just kind of wrapping up the conversation all together, if you had any piece of advice that you'd like to share with any employees that are listening uh, right now or any ways that you'd like for them to reach out to you if, uh, if, if they'd like to, is there anything you'd like to share from that standpoint? Um, yeah, just that, you know, be, if, if you do listen to your heart and your, and your, what your spirit and your soul tells you and, and your mind, you know, obviously, um, then like I said, good things will come your way. I believe that uh, the good things that as long as you're open to them and just to know that, um, 
the challenges will come, the, the trials and tribulations will come, but you can get past it and it's not the end of the world. And, and when you do get past it, you're stronger for it. And, um, you know, especially the women out there, um, and in, especially in the tech world, just stay strong and, and, and know who you are and believe in yourself and don't let anybody ever knock you down. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Adele. And uh, with that, I think we, we can wrap up today's conversation. But I do want to just take a second here just to say thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for sharing your experiences and really for just being open to this entire conversation. I think that um, you've really led from the front in terms of what it really means to be open and to, to be authentic and be true to yourself. And, you know, I, I think that all of us that are listening to this, all of employees out there are going to get something very meaningful and special from this conversation. So I appreciate you for that. And I want to say thank you for your time. Oh, well, thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed it and, and hope that I could help, help someone, anyone. And if anyone wants to reach out to me, by LinkedIn or have any questions, please feel free to do so. Uh, as I said, I, I love being a mentor. I love just giving information and helping anyone learn and grow. That's, that's my passion. And if I can help anyone, I'm, I'm definitely willing to. All right. Thank you again, Adele. Thank you. Have I mentioned that I get a lot of enjoyment from doing this here? What a conversation and what a consistent flow of just valuable considerations for us all to be able to put into our journeys going forward. But as you know, insight alone is not enough. We have to take that insight and turn it into action. Adele actually encourages us to open ourselves to opportunities throughout our career journey. So let's explore how that can come to life for you within the employment community. Your joining of the day, which is your two-minute action, is just to come in and tell us about a time when you allowed yourself to just be open to the possibilities that presented themselves in your career and then let us know how that transpired. What was the result of just being open? We love to share some of these successes and some of these moments with each of you. Just go to www.enjoyment.com slash community or text the word community to 33444 and that will give you all the steps you need to come and join us and join that conversation. So a bunch of people just like you as well as other employees that have been featured on the podcast and myself that are all coming together to make sure that you can move forward in your journey to experience an enjoyment through employment. It's an honor to talk to you. I cannot wait to do it once again. Until then, here's to experience and joy each and every day. Do me a favor and take care.